Alright, if there's one thing I've learned in my fishing career, it's that not all fishing corks are created equal. Absolutely not. I remember years ago making a trip down to Venice, fishing with a guy who's a very good fisherman. He and I were throwing identical rigs except for our corks. Our corks were different, everything else was the same, and he got up on me 22 speckled trout to 3. It was an absolute beatdown. Prior to that, I always said, corks are overrated, it doesn't make that big a difference. Ever since then, I've noticed it absolutely does make a difference on many days on the water. So I've decided to do a pool test today. You know I love these pool tests. I always learn a ton from them, and I know I will from this one as well. Now, in previous pool tests that you've seen me do, I give an overall score to the baits that we're comparing. I'm not going to do that today because some of these corks will be better in other situations than others. Like if you're fishing a flat, calm day, you probably want a cork that's a little bit quieter. Fishing a very rough day, you probably want a court that's going to make a whole lot of racket and get the fish's attention. But as always, I will provide commentary when I get home and check the underwater footage. Joel, who's over there rigging, <laughs> is going to follow me around with the H&H &H push pole. We'll mount the GoPro to that. Now we've got a vast assortment of course today, some of which are very, very popular here in South Louisiana. And to some degree, it's apples and oranges because we've got some oval-shaped corks and also some cup-faced corks. But again, we're not having them compete against each other for any ultimate prize. We just want to see how they sound. All right, so let me show you what we got. All right, first up, we got the Matrix Float. Then we got the Comal Tackle Popping Float. Then we've got the H&H &H Flexa Float. And then the cork that I use more than any other, the Versamax Pro Series Bolt. Then we got the Four Horseman Cork. Then we got the Bomber Paradise Popper. Then we got the Enticer. This is a very different cork. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we've got the H&H &H Big Balling Cork. Then we've got the Equalizer and the Cajun Thunder. In addition to that, we also have three clip-on corks. This is an old school one been around for years people still use it same with this one both made by H&H &H, and then another clip-on also made by Comal all right I'm eager to compare and contrast these corks let's get this party started all right we've set up all of our cork rigs the same way with a two-foot leader 16th ounce death grip jig head and an H&H &H cockahoe tail so they're all identical as far as that goes, it's apples and apples. All right, first up is a Matrix Float, which has a shorter wire than some of the other corks. Let's see how it looks and sounds. All right, the short wire and bead structure of the Matrix Float makes it quieter than some corks, but not as quiet as some others. And the cup face moves a good amount of water on the pop. All right, next up is the Comal Tackle Popping Float. I know absolutely nothing about this cork. Just happened to see it at Academy, so I picked it up. Let's see how it looks. All right, this cork gives a slight click. But most of the sound is simply from the cup face. And from above, you can tell there's not a whole lot of clatter with this cork. This probably isn't something I throw on a windy day. Alright, next up is the H&H &H Flexa Float. I've actually never used this product, but it seems pretty good out of the package. It's got a flexible wire running through it, weight on the bottom, and some beads to add some noise. Let's learn together how it sounds in the water. Alright, definitely more of a click than the previous float. But not quite as much as some of the others we'll look at. All right, once again, we have a subtle click with most of the sound coming from the cup face. All right, if you regularly watch my videos, you know that this is the cork I fish more than any other. It's a Versamax Bolt Pro Series. Now, what's unique about this cork is you can adjust the leader length so easily. It just in a snap takes no time and I adjust my leader length all the time. So I really, really like this cork. Let's see what we think about it in the water. All right, this cork has good sound. The 
it seems to come mostly from the cup face. The splash on the surface is more subtle than some of the other corks. All right, next up, a newcomer to the scene. This cork's only been around for maybe two or three years. It's called a Four Horseman, it's popular here in South Louisiana. Let's see what we think. All right, this cork has a fairly significant click underwater. Louder than some, not quite as loud as some others. And as far as water movement up top, I'd say it's about the mid-range. Remember, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on conditions for that day. All right, remember I told you about the guy in Venice who kicked my butt throwing a different cork? This is what he threw, a bomber paradise popper. Now, this was years ago when this cork first came out. I know these things are still popular today, but are they right for every situation? No, no cork is, but let's see how it looks in the water. All right, this cork is pretty loud underwater. Much more so than I expected when I heard it above water. You'll see. From up top, it's pretty quiet. It doesn't seem to be moving a whole lot of water. All right, remember I told you this enticer cork was different than all the others? Here's the deal. You tie both the leader and the main line to the same swivel on the top of the cork. There's no swivel on the bottom. And we looked at the directions. This is how they direct you to do it. Definitely outside the box. I've never fished with one of these, but we're about to see how it looks. All right, there's no click or clatter from this cork. All of the sound seems to be coming from the cup face. It performed a little better on the surface than I expected, given its crazy configuration. All right, next up is a new cork by a company that makes a million great products, H&H. &H. It's called the Big Ball and Cork. Definitely loud up here out of the package. Let's take a look at it. All right, this was clearly the loudest of the corks we tested, which would definitely make it a great windy day option. From above, you can see it moves a pretty good amount of water. All right, next we're gonna take a look at the equalizer. Now this cork has no weight, so it's really light. Let's see how it looks. All right, this cork, being unweighted, clearly didn't work well with our 1 16th ounce jig head. If you're gonna fish this cork, you probably want a quarter ounce jig head or heavier. All right, now we've got the Cajun Thunder. It's also on the lighter side, but it does have two brass beads on the bottom. Let's see how it looks in the water. All right, for an oval cork, this one was actually pretty loud. But of course, being an oval cork, it made only a subtle splash on the surface. All 
All right, now we got the Comal Tackle clip-on cork. These are very inexpensive and also very popular. Let's see if they're a good value. I used to use these religiously, but now I typically want more sound than they emit. And up top, they look about how you'd expect. All right, my uncle back in the day who I did a ton of fishing with, this is all he ever used. This is the H&H &H plastic cork. I guess it's technically not correct to call it a cork, but it's got rattles inside, it's really loud, really heavy. Let's see how it looks in the water. These are old school corks that a lot of anglers still use. And those beads clacking against the plastic sides definitely make a lot of racket. Up top, this one seems to move less water than many of the corks. All right, next up we got the old school H&H &H slip-on cork. It's the one with the slit down the side and the plunger in the top to hold the line in place. This used to be all anybody fished back in the day and still a whole lot of people use them. Let's take a look at it. The noise from this one comes purely from the cup face. And it actually moves a pretty good amount of water. So what'd you think? Did one of the corks look better to you for a certain application than some of the others? If so, let us know in the comments section below. And as usual, please give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.